All right, what up guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing another video that was a suggestion from one of you guys in the comments and that was to have RL commentate on old videos of himself either doing like flatland runs and contests or in different videos like some of the BMX, BMX action trick team videos. So today we're going to be covering the Rippin video from 1985. Right now we're on the old school BMX TV YouTube channel. That's where we're going to be watching this. So I guess uh, anything you want to say before we get started? Well, we he scanned through the video real quick. There's going to be some embarrassing moments in here, but you know I'm always down for being humiliated. Good. So um, and see how happy he gets about <laughs> that. Yeah, I've got a lot of questions. <laughs> I'm like, let's do a contest run. He was like, no, no, let's do this one with a pink scarf around. Yeah, it. <laughs> exactly. Great. <laughs> As always, too, don't forget to like the video if you guys enjoy and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And now that we got that out of the way, let's get started. I'm going to full screen this. Warning. Physical risk. Bicycle freestyle riding involves physical risk. Okay, so first I already got questions, but you do you remember like what is this a like an advertisement for a tour? What what was this like a promotional video for something or what why did you guys do this video? Well, uh, you know, I don't remember. You I don't? told you that. Yeah, I, I really don't, man. It's not like I'm going, you know what, I'm just gonna screw you on this one. I don't remember but anything. I, figured I, I don't asked. remember it, man. The those last three concussions <laughs> really set me back. But they erased you. you I do remember this. I'm pretty sure because everybody's been asking the videos, asking me about all these videos and things. And um, this is where I think, and I'll tell the story where the cameraman walked off the back of the ramp. Oh, this that was during the filming of this. I think so. If there's some wow. night shots in here and it's at Wizard, then it was it. So tell them about that. Okay. Um, Gary, I can't remember his name, this guy, a cameraman, really good cameraman, big cameras back then. And <clears throat> and I didn't know this, but um, cameraman, um, I learned this, you know, shooting stuff in Hollywood and you hear these stories and stuff and then I saw it for real. But, you know, like if a cameraman is shooting something off a cliff, he, he's got his head in that camera and they forget where they are sometimes. So I heard sometimes they have leashes where they tie him to a stake or a tree so he doesn't walk off the cliff. And I'm like... That makes sense because they're locked yeah. into what they're doing. And then also like with the serious cameras, I don't think they can have... They don't have any peripheral vision because it's like... Yeah. It's around their face. Yeah, and they're artists too. So they're like... It'd be like Shay when he's doing yeah. a drawing. I'm sure he's like, don't come in my room. You <laughs> yeah. Know? But um, yeah, I... I could see how they'd lose themselves in there trying to get the right shot, you know? Exactly. So um, Gary said, uh, God, I can't remember his name, really good cameraman. Um, I need to get up on top of that ramp. And uh, man, it wasn't very, it was an eight foot ramp and it was, uh, wasn't a very big deck. Maybe, maybe. I don't even know if it was eight feet. Anyways, whatever. It was, had a deck on it. And he was up there and untethered. <laughs> and he's shooting stuff and the, everybody's holding the ramp so he doesn't fall off the back. And we're doing airs and stuff. And then I was getting ready to hit the ramp and he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, my God, man. He fell right off the back, sh shattered his camera, broke both arms. So... We saw him a week later, and he was like this. Oh my <laughs> These God. support bars and casts like this. And I said, man, how's your relationship with your girlfriend? <laughs> he goes, it's being tried right now. <laughs> I mean, you can imagine. She's got to do everything for her, man. Wow. Uh, you can figure that one out. But, um, yeah, that, I, I thought, wow, it's true. You guys really do walk off cliffs and stuff. <laughs> Holy shit, man. That okay. was an experience. We got stuck on the warning page. Wait, let's look at this because we were just talking about this. Safety equipment should be used even so injury may occur. Responsibility for any mishap resulting in personal injury or property damage is expressly disclaimed and rests solely with the viewer. Okay. We're five seconds in. 
when I see these things like before a movie or a documentary, I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This has got to be pre-contest. Oh, I'm not supposed to talk during the video. No, you can. What? Yeah. So, what was this all about? This. Did uh, you just hit this space bar? Oh, I told you it's easy. You can hit this big square pad. It'll do the same thing. But... Prefer the space bar. Um. So first thing I, th I saw was Tough Wheels, and I'm about ninety percent sure that I never competed on Tough Wheels. I think Tough Wheels were before that. Uh -huh. These might have been Peregrine. Because they're at an angle, I don't remember. Okay. But um, yeah, so this is gonna be before competition or before I competed, anyways. So this was like a show or something they were filming, or this was just done for this video purpose? Yeah, I guess it was done for, uh, they wanted to shoot a freestyle video. Uh -huh. I think, you know, Wizard Publications, my dad magazine wanted to do it. Okay. Um, probably promote the sport, you know, promote the magazine and whatnot. I believe I was riding with Bonnie, Ronnie Wilton at this time. Haro elbow guards. I love those things. Look how tall that seat is. I know, right? Jesus. You can't even see the bottom. <laughs> those cotton gloves. <laughs> are they going to see this video? They're, those are like gardening gloves. Wait. <laughs> Holy shit. Hold on. Man. I'm still talking. That's like a three foot seat. <laughs> Man, I thought the S and M C post was high, but <laughs> there's a purpose to that. Why did you pause the video? Um, oh, those gloves. I wore those uh, Oakley cotton knit gloves that had the, they were white with blue Oakley logos, and the fuzz from those freaking things <laughs> would get all over my face and my nose. And you start <laughs> doing this, and it just gets worse. Oh man! But the C post is high. So that when you flip the bike around, you can grab the seat and your handlebars at the same time. Yeah. But I'm trying to think. I don't know what tricks I was doing back then where I would need to do that. But let's hmm. let's watch it and see. What bike is that? I'm not sure if that was the RL20 or if it was an old race frame. Haro pants. Do you miss riding in uniforms like that? Oh, yeah. Would you practice in uniforms or what would no. you? No. <laughs> so what, is that coming out of the wizard garage or something? Or? That's what they wanted to. I'm going down the street of wizard publications right now. I'm supposed to be heading for a ramp. Man, that's a big sprocket. <laughs> this is going to be like a 30 foot air right here. <laughs> Look how fast I'm going. There's that that uh, plate that everyone's got these days. That thing's cool. What plate? You know the like number plate with all the stickers on it. Oh right. I don't know if this is that same plate. I don't know. It looks simple. It might be. See, it wow, looks... it does. Yeah. Maybe I took it with me. And Gary is falling off the ramp. <laughs> <laughs> So was this filmed at night then? Yes. Is that hard to do at yes. night? Yes. Yeah, I bet. I think they even had a, a smog, not a smog machine, a fog, a smog machine, a fog machine. And I'm like, hey man, this is already a little difficult <laughs> with all the shadows. Now you want to, I can't even see the ramp. Wow. So what does ripping mean? It's like you're shredding. You've never seen like, like Eli Tomac going around a motocross track and go, damn, he's ripping. But like specifically, what does it mean? Because it doesn't mean like he's doing big airs. What does it mean? Like he's just like... That wasn't a big air? He's ripping Dude, it. It was 1985. No, I mean like saying. when someone does a big air, you're like, oh, wow, that, that was a big air. But you don't say like, oh, they're ripping, do you? Absolutely. Okay. Well, we did back then. I, I, I don't remember the last time I used the word, but... <laughs> All right, then. Shredding, ripping. Same thing. This is that lingo I was talking about for the movie Red. Yeah, I'm still learning Also, it was Lori Laughlin that was in it, not Tori or Talia Shire. <laughs> no, <laughs> I looked it up. <laughs> Talia Shire wasn't the mom or something. I thought they said she might have had like a small role in it, but the main actress was Lori Laughlin. 
Right. Right. Talia Shire wasn't going to be Bill's <laughs> Bill's wife. Well, that's She's what you made, sa- made it sound like. In no, it's, hold on, dude. I'm still talking. No, 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 no. We went to this thing in San Diego and she was there. I don't know what she if she was the money behind it. I don't know if she was in the movie. I haven't seen the whole movie. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty sure. Oh, I know for a fact we did. We promoted a movie with Talia Shire in I think San Diego, maybe it wasn't rad. I don't know what a movie it would have been, but. Hmm. Um, so anyways, I was noticing on this one hand, one footer air, we used to lock up our rear brake. Yeah, see my hands on the brake? Mm-hmm. So that we could stand on our forward pedal, you know, whatever pedal is forward. Okay. So you could take your foot off, because if you didn't put your brake on, your during the air, your um, foot would drop to the bottom, you know, it would pedal. And now you, then you had to deal with that. Of course, then guys like Josh White came in. They didn't care if they're where their foot was, and they just do everything without any without the brake. But, yeah, so that's why the brake's on. I see. I was wondering about that. Yeah. It's technical stuff, man. <clears throat> Ronnie Wilton. See how the back wheel's not moving? Because you got the brake on, you said? Correct. Wizard. Who's So who's filming this, you think, Aunt Wendy? Or did she only do photography? Photography. This is Gary. He had a full-on oh, movie. Oh, so this really big, was Gary. Okay. The movie cameras back then were huge, man. And you had to be able to pull in a bit. Oh, Gary. There's his name. There it is. Gary Capo? Capo? Yep. And then who's Robert Knopp? Canope. Probably they worked together, but you had to put a, um, a VCR tape into the side of the camera, and that's what wow. you recorded on. That's crazy. Yeah, that was high tech back then. And then they got to cut it up to edit it, huh? Like physically cut it up. The no, tape. no, no, no. When we did our when we did videos, I'd go to this guy's house in Torrance, and you sit there, and um, he'd bring it up on a big TV or big screen, and then you you pick the numbers down at the bottom. Mm-hmm. There's numbers that are rolling by all the time, and you go, okay, go from you know two twenty five to four twenty five. Cut out that section, bring that together. But when they cut it, they physically had to cut the tape, right? And then tape it to the section they, right? It wasn't like a software on a computer that was just like digitally doing it. I think that was in the Charlie Chaplin days, <laughs> like the 1920s or something. I think videos got a little more advanced than that, but maybe, I don't know. I was never there for the cutting. Morning rush hour traffic. People on their way to work. Doctors, lawyers, professionals included. Among the bumper to bumper masses, it's two more professionals. Whose voice is that talking? Is that Gary? I don't know. It's not you or Ron, is it? It kind of sounds like me, but I don't... Their day is not spent behind a desk. No, it's not me. Their decisions won't affect the nation's economy. Wait, it might be you. Okay, so this is a Z20... Is this a Z28? Camaro Z28? Camaro Z28? I think so, yeah. And... This one weekend, I got the um, I got the bug to um, build the motor up, right? <laughs> and my friend Dave Sigler goes, "I know a guy. You just it's all about computer chips now, or something right. like that." I was in Torrance. And I was getting the bug to build the motor in this thing, and so I'm checking in all the chop shops around my house, and I find this one hardcore shop. Man, every motor back there is sticking out of the hood. And I go back there, and Tommy Brackens is back there. Um, Who's that? Tommy Brackens was a BMX racer, extremely fast. And I'm like, hey, Tom. he was building an El Camino, I think, with a big motor. So I saw him, and I saw his car, and I'm like, oh, man, I want that kind of power. <laughs> so I didn't want to wait, though. That was the thing. I didn't want to wait. So I, Dave started calling all his friends. We found some guy to try to do it over the weekend, which... You know, it was a dumb idea, buying all the parts in one day, trying to get them to this guy. And uh, it ran pretty good afterwards. It ran pretty good. But, um, yeah, 
patience definitely pays off. But yeah, Tommy Brackens was building a, yes. a really fast El, I believe it was an El Camino, if I remember correctly. But, and that's like a famous car builder, you said? No, Tommy Brackens was a BMX racer. Oh, okay. So I, I'm in my hometown. I go, I'm like, I didn't even know you lived around there. That's and cool. he goes, I'm out here all the time. And I, see, I saw his El Camino every time I'd go down Hawthorne. And I'd always check his car out. I didn't even know it was Tommy's. And the, the license plate, I remember this. It said I-X-L-R-8. <laughs> I-X-L-R-A. Or something like that. But That's cool. Yeah, Tommy Rackham was a cool guy and a fast BMX rider. These two businessmen are R.L. Osborne and Ron Wilson, the BMX action trick team. And their workday doesn't start off with a cup of coffee. It takes off with a gallon of sparks. Well, that's not true. <laughs> I, t I started touring with Ronnie, and um, first thing, I we were in sitting in, um, and this is what you want, right? You want me to tell stories? Probably. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's going to probably this be This is what lot. they want. I think my chair's falling apart. Probably. And uh, so Ronnie, Ronnie and I are in tour. First, he turned me on to jalapeno pizza from Domino's. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Oh, my, I got addicted to those. It was really good, but let me tell you, you pay for it, man. <laughs> you sweat all night, and the next morning is even worse. But <laughs> we're sitting at breakfast, and um, we're having a cup of coffee, and Ronnie just takes this big sugar thing and just, you know, I mean, it's like I'm watching him. I'm watch I don't even know how the coffee didn't overflow. He just sat there for like a minute oh my God. filling that thing with sugar, and he's like, that's good. It tastes good, and it, it gives me. It works, you know. So I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, what? I so I tried it, and man, I had a lot of energy after that. Jesus, that was the beginning of shooting. Might as well just start doing cocaine at that point. <laughs> when you're doing shows every day, you need to figure out how to get energy. Twenty-four hours, and usually does. Coming to Wizard Publications. That was Lamborghini of America right there. Oh, they really? Their own bosses. Yep. And with that responsibility, cool. they begin their day with a BMX. Who's is that? Is that? Whose Porsche is that? Is that Bob's? Or is that the Duker's Porsche? No, that's... I'm not sure. That one back there was mine, I believe. That one right there. Oh, wow. I bought that from my brother-in-law. It was like an 80. Own boss. Two or something. And know. with that this responsibility, older one. they Very begin cool. their day with a BMX Action Trick Team board meeting in the offices of Wizard Publications, home of BMX Action Magazine and Freestyling Magazine. How can you not dress like that anymore? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> did you normally dress like that or was that just for this? No, I don't think I did a lot with that bandana around my neck. I, I'm officially embarrassed, but... <laughs> See that picture on the wall? That's that's a good picture of me and Ronnie. That hat looks good on Ronnie, though, huh? That's Ronnie? Yeah. Is that the guy we did the t-shirt with recently? Yeah. I always get him and Wilkerson mixed up. No, no relation. Yeah, he's right. We got some rad new tricks that we're working on. Can you all be clear on? Thanks. Go. All right, Who's this chick? That's Diane. Uh-huh. Um, she worked at the magazine for a long time. Very cool. And the executive board meeting begins in their explosive yeah, that is a cool real picture. world. That's how we always came out of the office. <laughs> the helmet straps on, they begin their day with an intense workout and suddenly find themselves 15 feet above the earth and getting higher as the workday heats up. Although Look at that, man. That's a good air. Yeah. Three years old. It's huge. Been in it from day one. one of the pioneers has been bebopping on his bicycle. For that ramp, days. I think, was six feet wide, These maybe. These together are very important for RL and Ron. Here, they're getting the timing down. That That's a mini ramp. So That's what we used to call it, the mini ramp. Oh, really? Yeah. The reason why they make it look so easy at their shows is because of the hours of time they spend inches apart from each other hanging in the air. I couldn't imagine riding side by side with someone on one of those. That scared the crap out of me. We're just riding it like that, too, of course. Yeah, that's 1985, man. That's pretty good. I mean, for them. Yeah. 
Notice the goggles on my helmet. <laughs> I was never in dirt. Timing perfected. New tricks come about, and that's how the two-minute act gets stretched out to thirty. That's not real twenty-two. Oh really? And I think Ronnie was riding a Schwinn. Is that the Radberry color? I guess so. The tricks they conceive, work out, and execute at the secret training center appear in front of thousands and in the pages of magazines. How often did you guys crash into those cars? Never. Really? Never, but I'll tell you, it was a pain in the ass to ride with Ronnie because, look at he doesn't make mistakes. Look how smooth he is. <laughs> did you see that? He just turned out of that backwards. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, watch. Look how smooth he is. <laughs> He's like looking at the camera. Always working some new crazy trick. That's the same thing as like a bending side. Yeah, so exactly the same thing. Whoa. Yeah. Oh my god, he made a mistake. I can't believe it. <laughs> Ronnie was so freaking smooth, man. Look at so that. So, is that on a boob bit of cut? No, that's a 540 right on the back wheel. That would probably. Well, no. So stop right there. Okay. So Ron Wilkerson, I think on a like a ten foot ramp would land on coping or the the bar and come in. I think he called that an abubdica mm -hmm. or something like that. We just call it a stall when we were doing it on mini ramps. Mm -hmm. But you can see where the idea came from. Respect. Look at that. That was a hard trick to do. It just looks like it just like launches you up. It's crazy. And yeah, look how it's much a, the ramp's moving when yeah. you land on it. Does that feel sketchy when it moves like that? Um, you get used to it. Look at that, Ron. I didn't know Ronnie was going that high. Look at that rollout. Spent totally riding. A lot of the time, it's behind a microphone for an interview or in front of a camera for various photo sessions. Mm. Today it's in a studio. Tomorrow That's it's in the Grand Canyon. I think so. Across the country on television, R.L. has appeared on shows such as oh, yeah. Magazine, and that's incredible. God, look how long her nails are. <laughs> are those all your bikes? Us Magazine, Geo, and even the National Enquirer have revealed the amazing talents of R.L. to the public. Probably a few of them. living color. A BMX freestyle bicycle is a precision instrument. Everything on one of these machines has a purpose. What is that right there? On the front of my bike. I don't know. On the frame. You see that thing? It was clamped around there. I see something there. I can't tell what it is. Now, I wonder if that plate was one that went onto my yellow bike. The plate. Oh. Did you have the Radberry before the yellow bike? Apparently so. Interesting. I think I rode a chrome one, a red one, a yellow one, Radberry. Complicated handlebar to handbrake setup to the space. What's the yellow? Oh, hazard, hazard yellow, right? And the yeah. Look how big the sprocket is. BFD. Is that the buff freestyle division? Big fucking deal. <laughs> <laughs> buff freestyle division, but originally. What is this right here? Because um, the brake arm. Am I running? I don't know, maybe that's not a coaster brake. No, look at You can see the brake arm. So I'm running a coaster brake with rear brakes. Hmm. That is a brake arm right there that mounts to the frame, which means that's a Bendix hub. Huh. But um, you'd clip your feet on the edge of that. And uh, so he made that. Brake oh, so it's like a little guard. Yeah. So you would you use both? You'd use the Bendix brake or the, depending on the trick or something like that? Yeah, I think I use the um, the handbrake for like if I'm in an air, because my pedal would be forward, which then I couldn't <clears throat> go back. 
okay. on my brake. So I'd use it to hold the wheel. But a lot of the ground tricks, spinning tricks on the back wheel were on the Bendix hub. Hmm. Weird, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if you wanted to do stuff like hopping on the back wheel or something, it'd be useful to have just like being able to put pedal pressure backwards and then lift up on it. Say again? Like if you're wanting to hop on the back wheel and do tricks, you know, with the Bendex hub, it feels like having the ability to just put pedal backwards and then lock it up like that yeah. would be kind of helpful. But you, it doesn't like, that's the problem with the Bendix hubs. They weren't made to go backwards. I see, yeah. <laughs> they would break all the time. <laughs> the bike sends these aerial magicians so I just got to, you know, I got to compliment Ronnie Wilton on this, that he, I mean, I, I didn't even think I started doing that until like, I thought like a couple of years ago or a year ago, but he's rolling backwards and he turns his bars the opposite way of rolling out and he slides his front wheel, right? And I mean, that came, re got really popular like three or four years later and I, He's doing it here in 1985. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I'd never seen that before. Yeah, that's interesting. See, I'm on my brake, and I'm standing on the front, so it would pedal. Huh. These two bicycle artists get their fingers dirty, though, just like you. They're not always in front of a TV camera, no way. In order to keep their scoots running smooth with the, the fedora. Sound, they go over their own mouth, like James Bond checking out the scene, not missing a speck. When you're 15, oh, so you used to tuck your t-shirt in. You don't want your bike to break down. Yeah, wow. So these two go over every note. <laughs> I, I never thought you would be someone to do that. <laughs> That's funny. Brakes in particular are crucial. Unlike a BMX racing bike where the brakes merely slow the rider down, a freestylers have to stop Damn. the rider and hold them in place. Some tricks fail before they're even tried due to weak brakes. To a freestyler, brakes are as important as food. And if you know how those guys eat, you get the message. <laughs> Other important grip spots include where your feet meet the bike. RL uses adhesive tape on his top tube and rear pegs. Oh, wow. Here, RL shows you the importance of the adhesive tape. So were those considered pegs back then? Yeah, right. And rear pegs. That well, that was swelled out for your feet to go on, right? But look, the thing you got to notice is that tube is tapered. See how fat it is? Yes. And that was Lynn's cast, Lynn Casson's idea. You, I believe Lynn was probably the first one to taper tubes. In uh, take your hand off there. <laughs> in all right. So, anyways, that rear end on the RL twenty two. I told Lynn, hey, you know, I need some platforms back here for all these tricks that we were coming out with or that were coming out. And I go, but I don't want to clip my feet on them, you know? And everybody was just taking a piece of flat stock, cutting teeth in it, or put a round tube and just weld it on there, you know? And so Lynn thought about it and he came up with this, which was really a beautiful idea and that it, the tube tapered, so it got smaller, it was out of your mm -hmm. way, you still had enough platform to do your tricks. That's cool. Yeah, he, he was, Man, I learned so much from him. Innovative. Innovative, but he always wanted everything clean. Even if he built a ramp for us, he he would just take, you'd get your ramp, but he would make it mount like you could never believe or you'd never think of that. You know, he was very creative and quality oriented. Hmm. And then you put, what is that, like grip tape on there? Yeah, it's like skateboard grip tape. RL shows you the importance of the adhesive tape as he explains how to do a switch stance. The hopping movements are to keep your balance, even if you're on top of your frame. Whoa. Getting into position, lifting your left foot over onto your front tire, no way. still hopping for balance. Keeping your arms very stiff, getting ready for the switch stance. There it is, switching foot positions. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> right? I didn't even know I could do that. Onto the pedals. Look how easy everything bounces, right? Now my body is like... <laughs> my oh, wow. ...at a slow pace, pushing the bars towards the ground. All the balance for this trick is between the end of the handlebar and the tip of your seat. Wow. Ron has brought one foot over to switch and move it onto the pedals. He is now standing on the opposite foot. How's he going to do no hands? Letting go of the front brake lever, bringing his left leg over, which is going to replace his hand. Wow. He has moved it onto the tip of his brake lever. 
all the balance movements here are the same once your hands this is like yoga on off. a bike <laughs> it's crazy there's like different poses yeah and i'm sure you're thinking oh he's faking it it's stable no it's the most unstable oh. <laughs> thing in the world your front wheels moving the bike's trying to fall over and um but ronnie was really good at this looks Very like important it. to learn to move your left foot with the handlebar and the end of your seat Think about that. The bike still wants to fall over. And the balance movements are still the same. He's, he's literally got his foot on the lever to balance it. You will need those front brakes on the way out. Switching feet, getting back in the original position, wow. and getting ready for the dismount. The quick jolt backwards. To finish up the trick, grab his handlebars and the trick is completed. But so how did you... And, oh boy, that's a good point. hold on. How did you and uh, Ronnie meet each other? How did that start? He rode, he toured with Bob Harrell. Uh -huh. He was touring with Bob Harrell. And um, Bill, I can't remember his last name, but Bill, um, who was kind of handling the tours and the riders and stuff like that, I think Bill called me and said, um, I don't know. He, I think Bill told me something, and I talked to Ronnie, and... Bob Harrell was cool with it. Everybody was cool with it, you know. Mm -hmm. And we made we didn't I didn't like call him up and steal him, but you know I had to make sure Ronnie was willing to um, ride with me. By the way, Bill has passed away, and uh, he was a good guy. Bill like, who? Can't, Bill, I can't remember his name. He worked at Harrow, and he told me he goes, "Hey, I know you're looking for a rider, man." He goes, "I think Ronnie Wilton and you would get along really good." He goes, "But I'm gonna tell you something." Ronnie has never been on time in his life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I'll straighten that out. Yeah, that won't be a problem. You can tell Ronnie, look, if you're not here on time, I'm gonna die. This whole <laughs> building's gonna explode. <laughs> Ronnie be an hour late. It was just, he's like, yeah. It was. It got to be funny, comical, but um, his <laughs> writing was so good and smooth, and uh, and we got along really well. That it was, uh, it was a good. It didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. Yeah, so I guess I stole him from under Ronnie's permission, kind of from Bob, but Bob was cool with it. I mean, I was wearing horror pants at the time. Oh, really? Yeah, and elbow guards, and that deal was set up with Bob, so. That's cool. But he rode, you could tell he spent a lot of time with Bob. He had that same rolling backwards, extremely smooth. They'd barely weigh, it'd just be like they're rolling forward. And then they spin 540s on the back wheel, like just carved it. Just the style, Bob Harrow style was just unbelievable. So smooth. And Ronnie was just like that. Um, and, you know, younger. So he's he was advancing too. So mm. Very cool. Yeah. Ronnie and I had a lot of fun on the road. <laughs> he brought his friend Richie. Richie was great. Bush. Richie Bush, man, he he would guard if we sold T-shirts and stuff. Man, there wasn't a guy within like a hundred miles that would even come near that T-shirt thing or think about stealing from us, because uh, Richie would not have it. Let me just tell you, he was he was straight up. What were you saying? You were saying last video something about you guys had you and Ronnie had RC cars you would play with in the hotels or something like that. Yeah, you get on these long rides and. Um, Long drives, uh -huh. you know, 12, 24, 48 hours, you know, and you're just sitting in the van and we saw um, a slot car set that ran on batteries and we're, it was only like a figure eight. <laughs> and so, you know, oh, let's do it in the van. It'll pass time, you know, <laughs> but everybody kept stepping on it and screwing it up and we're like trying to fix it. And, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, and the trick is completed. What's going on here? <laughs> What's the actor? Who is I'm this? pondering. Wait, wait, wait. I'm pondering my life right here. This is what people do. They stare at the ocean. And I know what I'm thinking right there. I'm going, I don't get it. I'm not getting anything. <laughs> Where they tell you to do this or something? Yeah, you know, I did not run on the beach. I didn't wear headbands like that. <laughs> Look at you can even tell I'm struggling with it. What did, who's the actor I always say you look like here? 
Ben Stiller. Yes. <laughs> I don't think so. From Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> That's Mike Buff. That. Going over videotape hundreds of times to correct imperfections or to find out why some routines work while others fell flat. Watching videos has helped me very much. It is the only way that I can really sit there and watch and see my own mistakes and learn my own style. Something else that's very important about... Do we video. work on a set list there? Like we have in the garage? Yeah, and I guess I'm, I'm, uh, I'm evaluating my tapes. I don't remember doing that, but maybe I did. Sometimes the tricks get so insane. What's that wire that's coming out of the end of the remote? What's that all about? The wire? <laughs> There's a wire going from the yeah, remote to the TV. <laughs> this, again, this is 1985. <laughs> because a couple years before that, you had to go up and change the channel. <laughs> but remember, there is no substitute oh, for actually going out and doing it. That's pretty good, Invert in 1985. Yeah. Look at there's a guard on the back of that so that bolt wouldn't tear into your foot. That trick Ronnie did, I'm still trying to get that one back. Look at that. I'm going to say this, you know, every time I watch these old videos, I'm truly amazed whether it's uh, me or Martin, Woody, um, Ronnie, any ground riders, any ramp riders. And what was being accomplished way back then was, uh, man, I mean, it's stuff I struggle with. Well, I struggle with now. And you, you just anyways, it's impressive. Mm -hmm. You know, a Dennis McCoy and of course, Kevin Jones, all the Flatline Riders, Bill Newman. Um, w the tricks that advanced out of this was uh, is just amazing. Yeah, definitely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? I talk a lot. I think you guys know that. But you know what I was just thinking is coaster brakes. The reason that freestylers like coaster brakes is when you rolled backwards, your pedals would stay. Like a free coaster. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah, I see. Right. That's so convenient. that's where the idea of the first ACS free coaster came from was, you know, from the coaster brake. But um, we wanted to be able to spin backwards to line up our pedals if we needed to. Hmm. But... Um, Remembering all this stuff. <laughs> Man, I can't do a lot of these tricks now. Man. Look how skinny you guys were. That must have helped a lot. A lot. <laughs> I need to get. However, <laughs> those plastic wheels did not work at all for brakes, so. <laughs> Oh, are those called Tough Wheels or the... Uh, I think we're riding Peregrine. I, I think Tough Wheels were straight to the hub. Okay. I'm not really sure. Fire spin. ACS rotor. Yeah. Wow. A busy day at the office with a show fast approaching. RL's mind is riveted yeah. to all the elements it takes to perform as one of the world's top professional freestylers. <laughs> you got the Tommy Bahama shirt on. <laughs> Maintenance. So that office, that was really my office, and that's where I set up tours, shows. We're doing commercials or whatever we're doing, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, I was in there all the time, all the time. Past performances. And the training. Sounds like a diving board. <laughs> Where is this? Kids, their moms, dads, the whole family, even the dog, have come out to watch these two wheel magicians. Maybe a lot of these people have never seen BMX freestyle before, but when they leave, they will be freestyle fanatics. 
We've got a skateboarder. Oh, so you guys were on tour in 85, right? I guess so. But the tour doesn't last the whole year, does it? Well, we would tour in the States usually for two or two and a half months uh -huh. in the summer. Uh -huh. um, and then we were, uh, Ronnie and I spent some time in, we did a tour in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, we toured, I think Buff and I toured Germany, all over Europe, Saudi Arabia. So those were, you know, other country tours. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah. And then, then we had... You photo shoot. I was going to Hollywood a lot doing what, you know, at first that's called a cattle call where you go there. And um, eventually I just said, no, I'm not doing no more. I'm not showing up. You got to go through that interview. And eventually I was lucky enough where they would just hire me straight. Mm -hmm. and I wouldn't have to go through that. Oh, but, wow. Yeah, I spent a lot of time driving up La Cienega to get to Hollywood. Do you know? Oh, wow. Well, do you know if you guys filmed this while you were on tour or were you not on tour at the time? I'm thinking this is true. Really? Wow. I have no idea how it got filmed. Gary. He filmed it. <laughs> Ooh, I got my gray Haro elbow pads on. There's the jet, right? On the back of your shirt. What? Oh, yeah. See that? 1985. I have no World idea. Tour. And Motives. I think that was another company of Haro's. Bob Haros, I think. I'm not sure. Motives? Yeah. What'd they make? I don't, know, I don't remember. You got Haro pads, it looks like. Elbow pads. Yeah. What does that say? Emo? Echo. Echo, Echo oh. helmet. Oakley goggles. Um, cool. I never knew this design was on your jersey. Neither did I. How cool. Ronnie was riding for Schwinn. U-Haul. Oh, we're at Pedal Power. Where is that? I don't know. Maybe Anaheim or something? Oh, so that was local-ish. Um, yeah, I think my dad bought that shop for a while. And then Rob, I can't remember Rob's last name, but I remember who you are, Rob. <laughs> So that that's a step up in the ramp. Uh -huh. That's a metal ramp. The first one we were riding was wood. Oh, okay. What did you prefer? Look how easy the 360s were. I struggle on that trick now. Look at that. That's over a 720 on the back wheel. In 1985. Yeah. With a Bendix sub, Ronnie did that. <laughs> that's freaking nuts, man. Cool. Look at that. I didn't even know you could do that. Is that a cherry picker? Cherry picker. Yep. Wait. Put the bars backwards. That's sketchy. You were doing the no hand did Miami Hopper. Yeah. Is that hard to synchronize your tricks like that? Not with Ronnie. Ronnie was so easy to ride with. And... Like, is one guy following the other kind of, or do you guys just like have a set up routine? We have a routine, and uh, you know, you trust each other. So you... See, that would be scary <laughs> with that narrow of a ramp. I didn't I even mean, know we did just... that. <laughs> I thought Blyther and uh, Ron Wilkerson were the first ones to do that. That's cool. So like, oh, it was cool, huh? do people still put on shows in parking lots like this? It's kind of cool. He does a foot plan on my frame. That's scary, dropping into that ramp like that. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? No. Do people still put on shows in parking lots like this? Like BMX shows? I think um, there's people that tour schools. Uh huh. And um, I think they do them in parking lots. I know I met a guy a year ago at that first book signing from 
way deep into Mexico, and he tours for a living doing freestyle shows just like we did. Oh, wow. Um, to this day. He's been doing it for like 30 years, excuse me. That's awesome. Yeah, so yeah. yeah this became like a thing. I mean, I know people still tour, but it's cool how it's just like set up in the parking lot so people go and bike and watch, you know? Yeah. It's like driving by and you see it. Arizona midsummer, blacktop, 115 degrees in a full uniform in hell. 15? 115. 115. Wow. 120, 126 degrees in Saudi Arabia and we're doing shows. Is that Duke? Yeah. <laughs> Look, Look how short shorts. his shorts are. <laughs> Man, I can't believe anybody would fall over there. Oh my god. <laughs> I love how you can tell it's him, even though it's like such a like grainy image. You just can tell it's Duke. <laughs> Do you think that's Bill? Bachelor right there? Is that no fear on the back of my plate? I had no fear on a white bike. I didn't even know that. I thought it was always on an RL22. That's a 22. I guess I kept the plate. Man, I remember. Uh huh. I remember Ronnie being a really good rider. I I honestly didn't know he was that that good and going that high. Really? Yeah. How would you guys end the show? Like once you did your last trip, would would you guys like just wave and ride away, or what was like? Was there a little a speech given, or what would you do? No, there was no speech. <laughs> um, like... I didn't, I was not a good announcer. Um, but we would go to a table. Uh -huh. We had a table, and sometimes we'd sell T-shirts, but we'd always sign autographs. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Professionals that's Wheelie, really, that's Eddie Viola, Martin, enjoy their work time me, Still, and Ronnie. Two real Where? Artists. I'm, I'm in the front, then Ronnie, then Martin. Instead of playing golf after work or a little tennis, they head off to the beach to freestyle, view the pretty sights, uh, and have some fun doing what they do best, showing off. Is Eddie right there. That's, that's Ronnie. Ronnie. Rock 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 Rock. Rock. That's Martin Aparillo. Martin Aparillo and the former King of Skate Park both from the GT Freestyle team. Joe and Ariel and Ron for some planning on the famous Southern California Strand along the Pacific. Wow. Like a moving freestyle show, Wheeling, throwing in some quirky mind blowers just to keep the spectators in awe. The group of these guys adds up to an expensive freestyle show. That is a good show. Yeah. That's not an easy trick to hop over the bars like that. I can imagine. Man, you always worry about clipping your feet. What about all the sand there on the runway or on the strand? What about them? the sand on the strand? I feel like you'd slide out from that. Yeah, and you gotta you gotta remember any Eddie was king of skate parks as he was a skate park rider and here he is doing ground tricks. Yeah. That's sick. Skinny were those wheels. As these top pros cruise along, tires probably 175. Oh, really? Thousands of kids are getting the freestyle fever. 
It starts maybe with a quick curb endo, and next thing you know, someone's backyard's getting a ramp built. It may be yours. <laughs> and every day, new and tougher competition comes along to challenge the best. Are you going to be one of them? Ooh. The and that was over, that was when the seats were high. <laughs> okay, Is that you staying on the bike? Yeah. Jesus. Mark was running, rolling backwards with a freewheel. <laughs> See how he had to pedal backwards? Yeah. And he's doing a surfer right there. That also back then was a really scary trick. Yeah. Okay. See, watch Eddie. He just, he doesn't, he's just always doing something, you know, funny or, um, he just fits that whole Hollywood environment. He's so good at that. Yeah. Receptionist Diane Harlan, Wendy Osborne, Charlie. Oh, Charlie Litsky. And you. Oh, Here's I guess Charlie. Do you remember him? Oh my God, he was like um, at BMX races. He would announce, and he could talk a hundred miles an hour, never miss a word, pronounce correctly all the time. Hmm. And um, I think he might have passed away too. I'm not sure, wow. but he was. Just a really good guy, tons of energy, super positive. Charlie Litsky was um, a great guy, definitely. Yeah. Story concept. So it was all your idea. I guess I did direct the film. <laughs> a small <laughs> film. David Wheatley, Gary Capo, Lindsay Broken Arms, Root. Root. Lindsay Root. Derek Rogers. Dar is that the same Darlene as mom's friend? No. Rare. I think that was Darlene. That was my manager, Darlene. Andy Jenkins sounds familiar. Yeah, he worked there for a long time and then he went, he was working at Girl Skateboard for a long time. Oh, wow. He was in the band Milk. Oh. It was Andy Jenkins, me, Mark Lumen, and Jeff Tremaine. That was fun. <sighs> What's DID? Duper Distributing. Chains, I believe. DID? Yeah, Diacom, Echo Helmets, Alina was probably the C, Freestyle Magazine, Gear Race, Wearmaro, National Tire, Oakley, Pacific Freestyle, Paradise. What was Pacific Freestyle? Don't know. Redline Engineering, Schwinn, so is that Skyway what Recreation, maybe those were Skyways. Huh. Barnet, France, those were the sunglasses. Those were nice sunglasses back then. Really? And I believe that was before Oakley made sunglasses. Oh, wow. Yeah, isn't that funny? And so, oh, so I never knew there was a time where Oakley wasn't making sunglasses. So what was their first stuff? Grips? Grips. Huh. Grips. And, um, and their grip was round, but it came out to kind of fit your hand like this. Uh-huh. You know? And they came in all colors, man. Everybody wanted them. And then they came out with goggles. Nice. I think was the next thing. So it was Redline Engineering before Redline Bicycles? Same thing. Well, yeah, Redline Engineering was, that's what it started out as. Very cool. Copyright. Uh -oh. <laughs> all those little digs. The FBI. Oh, the FBI investigates says you're copying. <laughs> I guess that's the end of it. Cool. Well, oh, that interview. Yeah. I guess that wraps up our first commentary video. We're gonna do more of these, of course. You know, like your different runs from competitions and yeah. just whatever other videos I can dig up here on YouTube. Uh, or if you guys have any videos that you want to send us that you, you know, especially want to see done, feel free to send that or comment with the link and we'll be sure to do that. Um, anything you want to say before we go? Well, I, I, I just got to say, I'm, man, I remember now just how good Ronnie was and all these comments I've made all along. They were true. He did a, man, I'm trying to learn a 180 into a 540 on the back wheel and he just did a 720 and went like, Almost another half. Yeah. In 1985 with a Bendix hub. That's... 
That's insane, crazy. right? Yeah. Man, he I, he was just so smooth and um yeah, it was cool. It was um I, every time I see guys riding way back in the day, I man, you could just see the kind of the the seed being planted for I'm not t I don't mean we're taking credit for anything that's coming on, but you can sure see where a lot of things came from was from all those old riders. Absolutely. You can see where the inspiration came from for stuff that's still going on today. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And I and I still watch it and go, I'm still impressed, you know? Um, I'm really, really impressed. Every time I see old riders, I'm like, damn. Yeah. In 1985. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that was fun going through that. Huh? Yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one we do. I'm also I'm also thinking, man, there's a lot of tricks in there that I can't do. <laughs> <laughs> With time, it takes time. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that wraps up our video for today. As always, I want to thank you for watching. We always appreciate all your guys' support. Um, if you enjoyed, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, if you have any comments, love to hear it. I love to hear all your comments about things. You guys point out things that we miss, so absolutely. Uh, let us hear from you. Go. Cool. Thanks for coming. All right, peace. Being here. See ya.